Hello and welcome to today's webinar by the AM Academy. My name is Sven and today I want to talk about changing the filament mid-print. Now in our previous webinar we talked about the T-Rex skull that we printed on the Race 3D Pro 3 Plus. Gotta get that name right. Uh, and the result is this massive chunky looking thing that took over 158 hours to print. So almost an entire week and it weighs a whopping 1.4 kilograms of plastic. Made from PLA, that meant that we had to change our spool once mid-print because there's only one kilogram on these raised 3D spools of plastic. And that's exactly what I want to touch on a little closer today because it is something that is relevant whenever you want to print very big parts that take a lot of material. Um, with a print volume of 30 by 30 by 60 centimeters on the Pro 3 Plus, it is quite likely that you have large parts that might sometimes take more than one kilogram of material, and then you need to do this swapping mid-print. And there's three basic options uh, to do the swapping, but before you even get to swapping, the first option would have been to use a spool of plastic that is bigger. We already knew beforehand that we, that we would need 1.4 kilograms, and if we had simply used a spool that had two kilograms of plastic on it, we never would have had to make the change. However, that wouldn't really have fit in this sideways uh, storage on the printer. Instead, I would have had to place the spool on the ground next to it and then have it feed into the printer through a little pass-through that exists in the door. But I also wouldn't have had a topic for this webinar. So instead, we used one kilogram spools. I just wanted to mention that using a bigger spool of material is, of course, always an option. But now we used a one kilogram spool, and now we have to deal with this filament switching. And the first of the three options I want to mention is simply waiting until the filament runout sensor says, hey, I'm out of filament. So there's a little sensor here in the machine that notices when no more filament passes through. It's an optical sensor, and it notices Okay, there's nothing passing me anymore, there's nothing blocking the light, so there is no more filament remaining on the spool. And then it pauses the print automatically. You can turn this off in the settings, but to prevent print failures, because otherwise it would simply print empty air, um, you can keep this enabled. And then that filament runout sensor would say, okay, I'll pause, and if you set it up properly, you can use the race cloud to get a notification about this stopping the printer to your email account or even your phone. Now the print is stopped and then I can come and say, okay, time to swap the filament, I'll unload the old one, I'll load the new spool and then I can continue the print. The big advantage here is that the spool gets used up completely. There will be no remaining plastic on the spool because it all went into the printer until the filament runout sensor said, hey, I have a problem. However, the disadvantage is that that is not very planable. So it's entirely possible that I print over the weekend and on Friday evening at 11 at night, my filament runs out and the printer stops. And then I only come back to the office on Monday at eight in the morning and the printer stood still that entire time. So I would have a very high um, duration of, of standstill. And that of course is time that the printer is not spending being productive. So I don't like that very much, but in exchange, I have no wasted plastic whatsoever. Option two that I want to talk about is intentionally pausing the print using the on-screen menu uh, and then exchanging the filament. This allows me to choose the moment where I switch the filament freely. I can always decide now is the time I want to do it, but the disadvantage is I'll have plastic left on the spool. Yeah, so it's a trade-off. I have very good planability. In this case, that's the option I used. I went in on Friday at four in the afternoon and paused the print, changed the filament, and then started the print again, knowing that it would keep printing the entire weekend through, and the result is really, really great. Then the third option that I generally do not recommend, but that does exist, is actually going in and cutting the thread of the old filament and manually feeding new filament right afterwards. This method means you do not have to pause the print ever, instead it keeps printing, but it also has a very high potential to mess it up a tiny bit and suddenly you do trigger the runout sensor, the printer might stop, suddenly you did it on the outer wall and you will see that uh, gap if you didn't feed quickly enough. So there's a lot of potential for this to go wrong, so generally I don't recommend it. I would always either wait for the filament runout sensor or manually pause my print. Now, 
when deciding when to pause it, it's not just about the time of day, but also what is actually happening within the printer. Because now I get to choose when to pause it, I can choose to pause the print while the infill is being printed, so the inside of my model. I won't see this on the outside later on. So that's what I did here, and because I paused it during infill printing, then swapped the filament, then continued the print, now that it's done, there's almost no way to distinguish at what point I did that pause, because the outer wall was unaffected. Now with the runout sensor, it can always happen that it pauses while printing an outer shell, and then you will have a little seam where that occurred, and you will be able to see it afterwards, after the print is done. But, as I said, those are your three basic options. I usually recommend option two. Uh, the problem then is that you have some plastic remaining on the spool. That'll be up to you to figure out projects where you can use the little bit of spare plastic that is still on the spool. Maybe you have a smaller print that you need to do. That's where you can use that plastic then. Um, so, as I said, that's my three options for changing filament. So that's all I really had to tell you today. We'll still show some more close-up pictures of this massive dinosaur skull after I'm done talking. Uh, as I said, I really like the way it came out. There's almost no way to tell when I swapped the filaments and the entire print just looks so good and it's massive. So 158 hours of print time came out great. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. If you do have any more questions or comments, you can leave them below the video. I'll do my best to answer all of them. And then I hope to see you again in a future webinar. Thanks for watching and see you next time.